what we're going to do this month. So November is going to be Creatures in Color, right? And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the artist Chris Sanders, but he was a character designer for Disney. He, uh, like Lilo and Stitch, uh, the Croods he directed. Like those, So if you see those characters, those are kind of his like mashup creatures, specifically in like Croods. So what I wanted to do this month is do a creatures in color thing where we're going to take realistic animals, which I'm going to have to print out while y'all are watching the cartoon. And then we're going to like draw some realistic stuff about those animals. And then we're going to create our own creatures to it. And I think today is, what is today? Sci-fi or fantasy? I think today's fantasy. So our own like fantasy creature based out of it, which means we're going to take elements of these animals and we're going to turn them into our own creatures. And then tomorrow, we're going to use color to bring about the kind of moods and stuff like that, that these creatures have. So how that all plays together. And, and we're each week, we're going to tackle something with a little different with sea animals going into this um, <coughs> sci-fi um, animals of, of the air, like birds of the air kind of stuff um, and into like samurai, all kinds of goodies. So that's what this month is. It'll just be, I think me and Mike Funt. So I apologize if you have to see me more than once a week. All right, Mr. Scott Ryder. Uh, and there is no end of the month camp this time for November and December. We're actually gonna use that week in Thanksgiving to do something as we create something that we can then send to somebody else, right? So something of giving thanks and thanking somebody for something that they've done. So using our drawing to kind of bless somebody else with our own art. And, uh, well, I'll let you know what December's like at the end of the month too, because we're gonna do something a little cool for other people there also. All right, Mr. Ryder, sir. Yes. You would be so kind as to roll the cartoon, please. Hair Raising Hair, one of my all time favorites, has a creature in it, which is why we're showing it today. One of my all time favorites, I think we watched that maybe a little bit while ago, but um, for those of you who haven't seen it, Hilarious. And it's the only cartoon that Gossamer appears in. So go figure. All right, here's what I wanted to do today. We're gonna to do creatures, right? I've got some land mammals that we're gonna sketch out. And the whole idea is to get used to drawing real life. The better you can draw real life stuff, the better you can do in cartooning. That's, it's just a, the way it goes. Um, so what I, uh, Mr. Ryder, there we go. So uh, this is Chris Sanders, right? And if you guys have seen the movie, The Croods or The Croods 2, you know, like the cat and stuff like that. And look at the animal mashups. So you got like an owl with a cat um, that he put in here. Here's a bird with a uh, ram's horns and some other stuff, right? So it's like mashup animals and creatures. So we're going to make creatures out of, and he takes real animals and he just mashes, mashes them up. So you can kind of get an idea here of like a bat dog hyena thing, right? So we're gonna do the same thing and create our own stuff. Do you all have, and by the way, I would highly recommend if you have a library and you can check this out or you're wanting to know what mom and dad can get you for Christmas or aunt and uncle or your best friend, The Art of the Crudes is a fantastic book. I love this book. All right, so let's get into, let's get into what we're gonna to do today. Um, we're gonna rough sketch out. So we're gonna kind of gesture a little bit and using basic shapes to get down our shapes of like kangaroos. Uh, panda, Doberman, Pinscher, Elephant, Tiger, and Flop-Eared Rabbit, right? And then what I want you guys to do, what we're gonna, so we're gonna take the first like 15, 20 minutes to do this and get used to the actual um, anatomy of these animals. And then we're gonna take our real life application and we're gonna mash that up into a creature. And what I want you to do is take at least two of these creatures to make your own creature with, right? Something totally brand new. So everybody has paper, everybody has pencil, something to draw with. I'll take that as a thumbs up, as a yes. All right, here we go. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with the kangaroo, all right? Now, everybody can see that, all right? Scott, are you, uh, are we good there? Looks good. Okay, all right, so here's what I want you to see. If we, if we break down the basic shapes of a kangaroo, uh, the head is kind of like a triangle, right? We've got an oval for the body, kind of a square for the chest, right? And then we have rectangles for legs. So what I want you to do is just to start out is take 
and remember, keep it, keep your drawing light. Okay, keep it light. These are just under, these are just pencil markings underneath. We're not going to get super detailed with this. We got some ears. Ben, now, would you be able to zoom in just a little bit, maybe? Yeah. For, for people I'll, with smaller screens. How is this better? Yeah, I think that's better. All right, here I'll move this drawing over just a tad. All right, so I've got. Here we go. I've got this, right? And then if I'm looking at my, if I'm looking at my kangaroo about where the nose is, I've got kind of a square that comes down like so. And remember, we're just using this for basic shapes. And then I've got an oval that doesn't necessarily attach itself to that square right now. And the oval does come up a little bit above. Right, so those back legs. So we're just gonna pop that in. We've got another, like there's an oval here where legs sit. Got two rectangles coming down. Right, um, and then like right at the end of our square here, there's, and then we get our arms. And then our tail comes down. So again, re this is just super rough, right? Super rough to get the idea of my basic shapes down. So that tail drags on the ground a bit. <clears throat> Got another leg back here. And I'm just gonna do an easy connect. So just like that, everybody can see we've got basic shapes of a kangaroo. So our in before we get into creatures, right, as we're kind of looking at this, some key features of a kangaroo are somebody throw something out here. Liliana Heatherose, I haven't seen you in a week. What are what's a key feature of a kangaroo that you would notice? You'd be like, so like we just saw those mashup images of uh Chris Sanders did of like the owl and the cat and stuff like that. You can kind of tell. So you guys can unmute yourself if you if you want. What's uh what's a key feature of a kangaroo? Oh, the legs. I got you on the chat. Yes, absolutely. Like, right? The legs. Look at those things. They're like stalks. Um, the tail, the absolutely the tail is. And maybe those, the way those arms hang a little bit in that triangular head. So when we're kind of getting our basic anatomy down, because we want our creature mashup to have some real, we want it to feel real, not just like it's a, it's a made up character, but we want it to be grounded in some, some sense of realism. So all I'm going to do here is you can see this picture here. Go ahead and start to fine tune a little bit of the details, right? And then now is when you can get a little bit more. Uh, you can take your pencil lines a little darker. The the kangaroo photo is just a little off screen off camera. There we go. How's that? There we go. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Uh-huh. All right, so we'll put some eyes in the dude's nose. Let's go ahead and add some detail in your in your kangaroo. So after we've roughed it in, this is going to help when we actually do our creature. If you decide to use, you know, parts of a kangaroo, it sounds morbid. Parts of a kangaroo. It's all right. We're not like. We're not decapitating the kangaroo. All right, we got, there we go. And the thing that I find easy is when I'm doing basic shapes um, to kind of get my bearings down on the drawing itself. It also helps me in my composition on the page. All right. I would love to have a pet kangaroo, like a miniature kangaroo. And apparently you can in the state that I live in. I just have to get a permit. So Hey, I'm the kangaroo guy. I draw the kangaroos. You draw the kangaroos? Yep. I don't right. really have a kangaroo character. No. Maybe maybe this will be like the first. Okay. Dad, I draw kangaroos too. You draw kangaroos too? Yeah, right. and I draw elephants 
And I draw a monkey. And I draw. You draw all kinds of animals. Yeah. All right, so and we've got a kangaroo down. You do draw dinosaurs. All right, yeah, so we got our kangaroo I down. I know you do. Head on mine's a little small. I could probably make that a little bit bigger. But all right, so that's one down, right? Now let's get into some more realistic stuff. Who loves panda bears? Who does not love panda bears? Raise your hand. What? Yeah, that's right. Everybody. I have a panda on my hat. <laughs> yes, you do. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so I've got the panda right here, right? Now, key features of a panda bear. One is like the coloring, right? That stark black and white fur and that round face. So what I want you to do is we're just going to take a look at this. If I, if I were to draw like a shape on this, his head is a circle, right? And then I've got this kind of shape here. So I'm going to draw a circle. And then I've got this big hump over the side where his back is. Ears are kind of up here. And if I'm looking to it where the eyes sit, eh, it's right about there. Nose, I got the snout that comes up. Like that. So again, I'm just roughing in my shapes. There we go. I want you to do the same. So we're, we're gonna get in our basic shapes down. It's all right if it like mine looks super rough right now. So don't worry about how rough the drawing looks. I got my feet down here. And then, uh, all right. So you can kind of see how that starts to come together, right? piece of cake. There's your roughed out panda. Simple shapes, circle, kind of like a horseshoe, right, of where I started. Um, and then we've got just some kind of curved lines back here where we get like right into the stomach area, the abdominal region. And then this is kind of just triangle or uh, rectangles. So from here, I will go in and sketch a little bit more of my panda. And I can't really see his eyes too much, but I'm gonna put his eyes in there anyway. And, and so kind of some similar rules apply, like from what we learned in inking, which is when we're shading stuff, we can use contour lines, some cross hatching. A lot of times when I'm shading with a pencil, I'll use contour lines. All right, here we go. So look at that piece of cake. We've got a panda. And I'm gonna round out that face a little bit. There we go. All right, so you can kind of see what that looks like. How is your panda bear coming? Is everyone ready to strangle me for suggesting we draw a panda bear? Sometimes I want to strangle myself for suggesting animals. All right, here we go. Again, contour lines, do some light shading, right? I've got my feet some claws. <coughs> All right, boom, there it is. Panda bear. Nice job, Nathaniel. Okay, so everybody got that down. Key elements of the panda bear. One, just the size. Like look at the look at the round shapes, right? It's a it's a very think kung fu panda, right? And Poe. Um, rounder shapes, friendlier, um, that fur and especially the color. All right, now let's roll. Uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna go over to Doberman. Now, what I love about this in a dog is the absolute construction of this animal. Look at the like very defined shapes. So I've got kind of like a like if I were to do a Doberman here, and let's bring this down some. I've got his head, which is kind of 
like a, it's a trapezoid really. And then his neck, if I look at his neck coming down, right? Like so, easy, remember, easy basic shapes. Dobermans kind of remind me of horses a bit as far as their, their, the way their, their anatomy lays out. All right. So yes, Alpha, your voice does sound funny. I love up. Way to go, Tater Tot, on the on the movie reference. All right, so we've got the pointed ears of the Doberman, right? And then if you look at the body, look at the body and how it comes out. It's kind of like with the head. It's just a trapezoid, right? This is the same thing. It's just bigger. So you can. bring that down and you got little tail and then see the legs that are back now if you look at the legs again this dog is made up of a lot of very similar trapezoids could you put your camera a little down i can't see the body of oh yep thank you yep no problem so we have said dog right and now you can get, we got basic shapes so just like that with one two three four five six seven eight shapes you've got your, your basic setup for a doberman now go ahead and based off this picture go ahead and kind of add a little bit more detail to it so some key features of a doberman the pointed ears right the pointed ears are kind of like a dead giveaway on doberman anytime you see that see <clears throat> see how fast we can do this all right We've got his nose and look at the jaw too and the way the jaw line comes up so again the better you can draw real life the better you can draw your cartoon your animation characters you those of you who have been in this class for a while know that I keep quoting that Chuck line of you've got a hundred thousand bad drawings in you the faster you get them out the better you will be and to draw everything I am on bad drawing 38,429 I still have a ways to go all right so here's this Stomach comes up. I realize that's a boy dog. I will not be drawing that part for this class. Uh, get the legs that come down. Look at how the legs stretch in the back. So if you notice, um, like in horses, dogs, and that kind of thing, the back legs are not straight, right? It doesn't bend like our knees do. They come back and the knee is actually in the back. So you can Kind of reminds me of the dogs from Up. Yes, it does. Yeah, Tater Tot landed that reference. I love the dogs from Up. They have such silly voices. They do. I including the one menacing dog. He still has that funny voice, that funny high voice. Alpha? Yep. All right, so there we go. There's our, there's our Doberman, our Doberman. How's everybody doing? No one's crying yet, which means it's all going well. Nice job, Ethan. Love that, dude. Great job on the shapes. Absolutely. Very good. All right. Let's get into, uh, let's move down our animal line here and let's get into the elephant. Now, what's awesome about the elephant, obviously key features of an elephant, right? The tusks, the trunk, the ears, the overall size of the animal. Um, let's see if I can, uh, it's not going to work. We're gonna just do this okay so elephant now keep in mind like as you're doing this to i've got kind of a circle right here for the head the eyes then sit so if i'm i'll make it a little closer to there we go um i've got a circle right if i look at where the eyes sit underneath it's it's closer to the bottom in this case the elephant's looking straight at me and then if i go to like I can bring my oval I've got like an oval right here right and 
that oval is where the base of my trunk starts. And then you can bring that down some because you'll notice that off that right here, before you get to the bottom of that oval, we have our tusks, right? So here's the basic building blocks of our, of our elephant. And then I can add some kind of features there. Okay. So you can kind of see how that's already starting to rough out. I've got these big ears and these ears are giant trapezoids. And if I look to see where, oh, look at that, there's two birds on the top. If I look to see where my ears come out. It's all the way down past my tusks. And they fan out. Kind of reminds me of butterfly wings a little bit. All right, so I've got that. I've got the legs underneath. In this case, the legs are underneath the, or like kind of behind a little bit. And we don't really see his feet, so that's not a big deal. All right, so my, my basic construction of an elephant, right? There it is, basic shapes. And then now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a little bit of detail. So the elephant's eyes set to the outside of their head, if you notice, to the outside. And then I'm gonna get in with this trunk action here. All right. And then you've got the kind of obligatory wrinkles in the trunk. All right. And then I've got his, where his eyes come up and then connect to his ears. So start to pipe in those details. This will come in handy when we're creating our creature, which we're gonna start in like two minutes, uh, maybe three. Notice too how the ears are not asymmetrical or are not symmetrical, they're asymmetrical. So you have like folds in a little bit that are a little bit different in each one. Like this dude's got a little uh, tear what it looks like a little bit on one side. All right. And then I'm going to bring my head down there. All right. So there you go. Quick and easy, right? We've got our elephant down just like this. All right. Rolling on tigers. Look at that regal tiger, just like a house cat that would eat you. Okay, so we get into the tiger. Actually, for this one, I can move it over here. I'm gonna do tiger on the bottom. Now the tiger has more of a squared off head. Uh, right, and then if you look at body wise, we kind of have like two rectangles. So we're gonna go rectangle for the head. I'm sorry, square, square for the head. We've got kind of ears that come off that square. And then if I'm gonna look at body shape, I'm gonna break it down into two different areas. I almost have a square, like if I were to do a square going sideways and it comes up to the middle of the nose, it would look like this. Right, one, two, three, four. And then off of that come the legs and in the back here it's almost a straight up rectangle right so does that look like a tiger not at the moment but it will okay yeah somebody's bred your cat was sitting like that if i had a cat once twice a few times cats are interesting i have more dogs now than i have cats all right, so go ahead and start to put in your details. So check out where like the eyes sit. So on my square, the tiger's eyes actually sit a little bit higher, right? It sits in that top third. The nose kind of comes down into that bottom third like that. So that's kind of an easy way to construct my tiger. So 
So who won? But um, Evie, did the lizard win or did your cat win? All right. I'm gonna pull this up in some detail. Notice too, like the you've got some the cats. The big cat here has a muzzle like so that comes down. So you can see how that kind of wraps out a little bit. And then that fur on the side of his head is kind of what squares it off. All right, I'll do this. And it's not very furry on the top. So it's not like he has like a super spiky hair. Right, so for the moment, we're just gonna roll this. And, and then notice the, the way the stripes go. The stripes kind of help us, help tell us the, the physique of the animal. Like so. There we go. And then, I, then I can continue to kind of do that around and bring the stripes in. He's got kind of some wicked looking stripes there, right? And super quick, there's my tiger. Okay, last one, floppy bunny. Um, we're going to make this quick because I want to, I want to give you guys at least, um, 15, 20 minutes to do your own creature. So floppy bunny. I've had one of these. They're adorable. My next I want to own a pig as a pet. I want a, a pig. pig. All right. I would like a tortoise. That's what I want. I want a tortoise as a pet and a miniature kangaroo. All right. So let's take a look at the, to the rabbit, right? If we were to break this rabbit down into shapes, you can see that we almost have kind of like concentric circles. So I would start with one circle here and then I've got another circle here for the muzzle and then almost, right? I've got another circle here and then an even bigger circle. And it's, man, there's like a stuffed animal and I don't remember what the thing was, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. See, George and Victoria want a tortoise. I'm totally down with that. All right. So look at where and the circle where the eyes sit. So if I've got my line here coming down, the rabbit's eyes are almost halfway. And then I notice that in here, about halfway in, is my nose. Right? Get that little. Just like the tiger, we got the little muzzle. Ooh, you could do like a tiger rabbit, a tiger floppy eared rabbit. All right. I've got big old floppy ears that come down off this dude. And if you notice too, where the kind of fur sits. Got my little feet underneath. Got a leg that kind of comes out because this floppy eared rabbit's got some weight to him. And then same thing back here, right? The super quick way to draw a floppy eared rabbit. There it is. Floppy eared rabbit, bing, bang, boom, done. It looks like Egbert. <laughs> All right, now here comes the fun part. We've got about 15 minutes. What I want you guys to do is I want you to take one, like we just did kind of an anatomical viewpoint of animals, right? And we've got six of them down here. So what I would love for you to do in our creatures, and this is where once we've kind of applied technique, our imaginations can then run loose. I want you to take at least two, a maximum of six, but at least two animals. And I want you to, C combine them in some way to make a creature of your own. So Can I like, do like a uh, bunny tiger? You can do whatever you want, man. Pick two of these animals at least, at least two, and then combine them in some way to make that creature. So, 
Uh, toast, you have no idea. All right, so Toast, can I help you out? Do you like rabbits? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Toast, do you like rabbits? All right, so-so, uh, -so, do you like kangaroos? Toast. No, don't like kangaroos at all. all right, what about elephants? Do you like elephants? A little bit, okay. So could you combine an elephant and a Doberman? I think you could do it. What would happen if you wanted to, if you combined uh, an elephant and a Doberman? All right, so everybody go ahead. Liliana and Heather Rose picked at least two uh, bread. We got bread, we got toast. I feel like we should have bagel in here somewhere. <laughs> uh so pick what you want to do um and combine those elements eliza figure out what you want to do we have evie tater tot ethan grant george and victoria me mouse hope i got your name right elias all right so i'm going to take these two and remember you can use your reference drawings that you guys did i'm going to leave I'm gonna leave this up right here. Let's see if I can fit it all in the same frame. All right, so combining two animals. Man, what am I gonna combine? All right, I think I got it. I think I got it. So, and then you can name your creature because we should all name our creature. And then keep in mind too, you're gonna to want it, whatever drawing you do today, please keep that um, for tomorrow because we're going to add color. We're going to go through some like color techniques. I'm going to show you some examples of creatures in color, kind of what that evokes. And then we're going to do some little quick color studies on tiny little creatures. And then we're going to actually do our uh, apply color to creatures. Eliza, go ahead. I'm not going to be here tomorrow because I have a class I cannot miss. And it's like one hour and 15 minutes. Okay, no problem. We'll tell you what, what you can you can color it then on your own when you have a chance. And then um, hopefully you can make it back for one of these uh, this month. And then we can see what that looks like. Because I'm probably just going to be here on Wednesday. On Wednesday. That's totally fine. We will. We're happy to have you. All right. So you don't have to be super hyper realistic in this, right? This is where you can take a chance to do some cartooning techniques and and apply what you've learned I'm going to sketch out here a yeah I know exactly what I'm going to do all right um so are we allowed to discuss the Mandalorian episode ch or chapter 10, or are there still people who have not seen it yet? If you have not seen Mandalorian season or chapter 10 of season two, please put in the chat, I have not seen it. Don't ruin it for me, Ben, because that would totally suck. Can I show mine? Oh, Evie, you haven't seen it. Ah, Lillian and Heather Rose, are right, you haven't seen any Mandalorian yet? Okay, I won't. I won't get. I won't nerd out. All right, uh, Nathaniel, yes, go right ahead. I literally just speed run this. Whoa. So tell me what you got a combo there, uh, buddy. Uh, a bunny and a tiger. <laughs> and the creature's name is the Bitoni. All right. Bye, Tony. Bye. Can I show mine too? Absolutely. Okay. I know. The Kraken Tiger. <laughs> the Kraken Tiger. All right. Oh, wait. Nice. <laughs> uh, Davy Jones would be proud. All right. So the cool thing about creatures and learning actual animal anatomy is when we can kind of bend and break those rules of creature anatomy. Let's see if I can get these big old 
swampy. Ear. There's a question. Do we have to do these animals or can we do our own? Um, I would prefer for this one, if you can pop um, a combination of here. And here, here's the reason why I say that sometimes I say, go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, other, other times like this, I know it can be a little difficult and the whole, and part of the idea of, of these classes is to push you a little bit. Um, cause I find some stuff when I get super frustrated drawing it, I just, I'm like, I don't want to do this. And I need to kind of push through that a little bit. Now, um, toast, is it, you're just totally uninterested in the animal selection or maybe, um, or you're having a difficulty drawing one of them. It's just not coming out the way you want it to. And by the way, you can unmute yourself. Oh, you're just wondering. Yeah, preferably if you could, if we could take, if you could take two, at least two of these animals. All right. I'm gonna get these giant rabbit feet in here. I just hand us up. Who's? All right. Eliza. I'm just kind of uninterested in the animal selection because I've sort of come up with some animals that all involve cats. Involve cats. Okay. I'll tell you what, if you toast, Eliza, if you want to pick something else, go ahead and show us when you're ready. All right, so is it okay that I'm doing a kraken? Yes, it's totally fine. All right, I need some tiger stripes. Here's Grant. All right, Grant. Nice job, buddy. Can you hold up a little closer? That's awesome. All right, tell me what you got there, kiddo. I did a frog body and face with crab claws and owls. <laughs> nice. All right. Well done. All right, I'm just going to put some tiger stripes on the ears and maybe color the bottom here. Or not color, I'm just going to shade a little bit because I can add color to this tomorrow. And maybe I'll kind of get some fur lines down. Okay. My dude, are you drawing my character? Am I drawing your character? My my tiger bunny thing? Um, I've got a tiger bunny elephant. Ah. Because my thing is a, a tiger bunny. It, yes, it is. So I, I kind of took a little bit of a cue. And then I've got a giant... I got, I got the giant kangaroo tail. Here's tater tot. All right, tater tot. Let's see what you got, man. I did a panda, a doberman, and a kangaroo. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's got the cute puppy dog face, too. Yeah. Wicked job. Pupper. I love it. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So there we go. That, that's the start to my creature. We'll do some, he's got to have some claws too, I think. Because uh, we're going to add that part of the tiger to the rabbit. All right. Okay. There it is. My tiger, rabbit, kangaroo, elephant. Or as I like to call him, my Steve. There it is. This is my Steve. Let's see, we're gonna do that. <laughs> Some of these lines too will just help as I go to color tomorrow and know that I've got some, just like the rabbit does, some variations in fur color. I'd like to show more of my character. Okay.
Nice. Love the stripes, man. Way to go. I took a more anime approach. Ah, uh, you did. I dig that. All right, put in some heavier eyebrows. Would anybody else like to share where they are at with their creature? Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know who that was. Scott, can you can you highlight? Was that was that bread? Yeah. Aha! I got it. All right. You can unmute yourself too. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. All right, kid, remind me again what you combine. <laughs> you have a kraken and a what? And a tiger. And a kraken and a tiger. Nice. All right. Keep going on that. I am about to the end of my rabbit. Got my stripes. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm set up for for color for tomorrow. Get a little some lines underneath here. You would like to share? Absolutely, go right ahead. All right, Evie. Kind of like a kangaroo rabbit, I guess. Oh, look at that. that. See, that's adorable. I would have one of those as a pet. Able to leap. It's almost, yeah, have you guys ever seen, uh, Evie, have you ever seen a, uh, what do they call wallaby? Yes. Yes, I would let, I would take a pet wallaby. That's what I would take. Uh, if you could have any fusion of these animals, what would you have for like a pet? So I would love the... I would love like an elephant that was furry like a panda bear and had the stripes of a tiger because I would want to ride it. So not like a woolly mammoth, right? But like a, a tiger or, or maybe it's a tiger that's really big with the tusks of an elephant and, um, and then was like super fuzzy like a panda bear. Because if I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride in comfort and nothing's more comfortable than a panda fuzzy tiger. I probably want a pig and a rabbit mixed together. They're just one of the cutest things. Pig and a and rabbit. I yeah. love pigs so much. Oh my god, I love pigs. And I love rabbits. That's the perfect combination then. That totally works. I would want like a giant dragon mixed with like I don't know, a panther, a dragon panther. <laughs> That would be awesome. So if if you have been, could you shift the reference pick? Yes. Um, my favorite animal at to go to and see at the zoo is the giraffe. I just think they're the most fascinating animals. So if I can miniaturize the giraffe, like they had a commercial once that had a miniature giraffe, I wouldn't even need to modify any of that thing on that. Just shrink them and I'll take that. Kind of like Gru in uh, Despicable Me. Tater Tot would go for a Doberman and a kangaroo together with the coloring of a tiger. See, that would look pretty cool. You'd have like a guard dog that can lap or like jump 30 feet in a shot and it can carry stuff for you because it has a pouch. Talk about convenience. It's like a backpack animal. All right. So there's our reference. Eliza has her hand up. Yes, Eliza. So I have three animals and I can't with three. Okay, let's see. So I got so I did Dritten, a Pitten, and a Bitten. So the Dritten's a Doberman Pincher. Well, I actually didn't raise that one. It's not really a Doberman Pincher because okay. the one I actually because I actually got that idea from a book, but okay. it didn't have the Doberman Pincher in it. So I'm actually just. Keep it as a dragon and a kitten, as the book said it was. Okay. Then Can the pittens, a, and then the pittens, a kitten and a penguin, and the bitten is a beaver and a kitten. Ooh, a beaver and a kitten. All right. Can I see what that looks like? Nice. I like. 
those would be like very efficient animals. The beaver kitten is like a cuddly friend and can build you a can build you a house with some wood. It must have a pouch, yes. I love it, man. Nice job. Who uh, else wants to see a combination of Wally Coyote and the Roadrunner? I want to see. All right, let's see what you got. Uh, I haven't drawn it. I I just thought of that. Okay. I might draw it. That was a tease. Okay. Yeah, it's a teaser for what I may draw the next time, and I will show you. you know I think that's a great idea of combining Looney Tunes characters. It'll just take some a lot of research and drawing to do. <laughs> I, but you could do it. All right. So um, I'm in the category of draw everything all the time, right? Colored pencil. So I cracked that out today. My buddy has a faux member thing, and it's about foes and villains. So the whole purpose of this is experiment with other stuff. I like to experiment. This is just Prismacolor pencil. That's all it is. So I use a, a light blue pencil to do my underdrawing with, and then I pop in colored pencil on top of that. So when we get into color tomorrow, we're going to kind of apply some of this. So if you're able to make a tomorrow colored pencil marker, um, really anything that you use that you feel comfortable with in the color realm, I would recommend. All right. So before we wrap, does anybody have that has not shown that would like to show. I just want to show you something that I drew just right now. Okay. I drew this with marker. Uh, oh, well done. Uh, I like it, dude. Nice, nice expression on the face. So uh, tater tot, it's on Instagram. Hashtag Fovember and you have spelled it correctly. On, if you guys are on Instagram, that's mine. And then you can see for mine on my post, I connect to the guy, my buddy who started it, and then he's got the stuff. And the whole idea is just draw something in whatever his prompt is. So today's foe was Elmer Foot. All right. So that's going to wrap for today. Uh, Remember, anything that you feel comfortable with doing color with tomorrow, I'm probably going to bust colored pencil in what I'm doing. So um, kind of gives me an uh, ability to layer like I want to. And so I recommend whatever you guys feel comfortable with. You can either redraw your character that you have here or if you're already into it. So we're going to we're going to do some simple color techniques, learn a little bit about what colors mean what and then get into actually applying that to our creature our fantasy creature. So have a great evening. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and uh, happy Wednesday. Joyful mouse, happy Wednesday. Have a good one guys. Later dudes. Bye. Bye.